Lord have mercy. I just hear the Holy Spirit say, tell him to blow the shofar over this. Something is blowing your direction. A miracle is blowing your way right now. Oh, the church is not excited. I say, a breakthrough. The horn is about to sound. Your Jericho wall is coming down. Your demon force, anything trying to stop your progress is about to get pushed down in the mighty name. Supplier over your offering, the blowing. I can't take some people who are not excited in the house of God. I say your Jericho wall is coming down. The relationship issue you have is no more. The financial problem you have is no more. The sickness is no more. The generation curse is no more. Raise your Shotan. Jericho wall is about to tear down. I feel a shout. I feel a shout. I feel a shout. Miracle, 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 miracle. Oh God, I feel deliverance in him. I feel deliverance in him. Yes. Something is about to hit this hole. Make a noise over that side. Come on, over that side. Lift your hand and praise him. Make a noise over there. Take it away. Take it away. Take it away. Oh, something is about to happen over there. Come on, make that sound over there, everybody. Come on, everybody. Give me the instrument. Next row. Come on, open your belly. Come on, open up, open up. Open up for a miracle. Open up for a miracle. Somebody open up for a miracle. Your Jericho wall is coming down. I say your Jericho wall is coming down. Make some noise down in the center high. Make some Holy Ghost. Something is happening in this room. Yes, yes. Mighty God. Something is happening. Are you ready? Lift your hand and get ready. Right here. Right now. Lord God Almighty. The Holy Ghost is moving. Something is taking place. Come on, in this aisle, get yourselves ready. Raise your hands. Come on. Receive it. Miracle, miracle, miracle. Miracle, miracle. Miracle! The Jericho wall is coming down. Get ready, get ready! Somebody open your mouth! Open your belly! Somebody! 
the holy presence of the living God. They march around the wall and the Lord said a shout. And when the people made a shout, when the trumpet sound, the walls got to come down. Somebody lift your praise. Stamp your feet and declare it's coming down. Everything in your life that is not of God. Every dealer and spirit, every up your working spirit, every voodoo and hoodoo, every highland powder, every Jericho wall, they got to come down. Somebody make up your face. Get aggressive with the enemy. Lift up your heads, O eagles. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve him with gladness. Open up your belly. Open your mouth. You got to push today. Oh, something is about to hit this place. There's an assignment with miracle today. There's an alignment with breakthrough today. Amen, somebody. It's about your resurrection. Lift your hands and say, I'm not dead yet. And I don't plan to die soon. Lift your hands and say, neighbor, the devil held me down and thought it was over. They locked me down and thought it was the end. But today's my day for a resurrection. I'm gonna rise. I'm gonna rise. Touch yourself say, I'm gonna rise. I feel a resurrection. Can I tell somebody in here that the Lord's gonna tell you you've been buried too long. You've been down for too long. They laugh at you. They mock and jeer you. They stab you in the back and thought it was over. Oh, somebody praise God. Touch your neighbor say, I'm happy today. My heart's still beating. My mind's still in place. I'm not under. I'm still above my grave. Oh, somebody not talking to me. I feel the Holy Ghost. Can I preach it like I feel it? Somebody give him glory. Lift your hands and say, excuse me, neighbor. I'm coming out because I got my shout. That devil is a liar. That devil is a liar. That devil is a liar. Jesus himself, he was dead and he was buried. Can I preach it like I feel it? They nailed him, they nailed him, they rebuke him, they abuse him. Have you ever been there when people who you help turn their back on you? They praise you today, but convict you tomorrow. Can I talk to somebody? They wave you up today, but tear you down tomorrow. Oh, touch your neighbor, say, almost gave up I almost let go but somebody wrote a song and tell me because he lives then I can face tomorrow because he lives all fears all my fears all my fears are gone because I know who holds my future then my life is worth living somebody say live live touch your body say i shall not die but live i shall live again i die once i won't die twice the devil is a liar somebody say graveyard lose me Somebody say, graveyard, let me go. There's going to be a earthquake. The Bible said, on the first day of the week, 
early Sunday morning there was an earthquake and it shook the, the graveyard and it came for one man because the stone was rolled away somebody said roll it I got some problems before me but roll it I got some stone in my life but Lord roll it I got some demons in front of me but the Holy Ghost roll it I got some neighbors who is the devil and they try to hold me down but the Holy Ghost send an earthquake send an earthquake somebody holler earthquake say Lord God Almighty send an earthquake and roll and roll and roll away my stone roll it away roll it away I'm coming out touch your neighbor say neighbor it ain't over it's not over I'm coming back from my setback I've been messed up I've been battered I'm talking to somebody here I've been bruised mistreated they abuse you they use you they lie on you turn their back on you they nail you up then they bury you and think it's over but touch your neighbor say neighbor i shall rise i feel something in the holy ghost i feel something in my spirit telling me to tell somebody rise up rise up rise up rise up rise up hold your neighbor by the hand lift up your neighbor's hand i said come on neighbor i ain't leaving you now shake your neighbor's hand and say rise up now it's your time it's your season it's your moment it's your breakthrough rise 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 somebody rise and shake your neighbor shake them shake them shake somebody rise up rise up come out of your grip come out of your grip yes sir yes sir yes the holy ghost is moving come out of your grip get out of your grave rise somebody rise rise somebody rise somebody's rising somebody's getting up somebody's about to rise your angel your angel your angel has arrived no more graveyard you're stepping into town you're stepping into the city it's time to rise it's time to go to norman manly anybody want to fly touch your neighbor's neighbor my graveyard won't see me tonight i'm coming out somebody say rise 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 somebody say i'm rising i'm raising no more deadness no more sickness no more curse something is about to happen in here at the count of seven uh, i wanted to turn three times and declare reverse the order in jesus name are you ready raise your hands and mock that devil seven uh, six uh, five four three two one turn around turn it around yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. Rise. Right. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Look at that. Look at that. Holy Ghost, go ahead. Take it. 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 Take it.
Take it. Take it. Mighty God. Something is inside this place. The anointing is in the house. Lose yourself. Lose yourself. Somebody rise. Rise, somebody rise. Power, power, power. Give him some glory. Give him some glory. Give him some praise. Give him some glory. Rise. Rise. You're watching on television. Rise up. Come off your sick bed. Get up in the name of Jesus. No more graveyard. No more burial ground. No more burial ground. You're coming out of it. You don't belong there. You don't belong in there. You're a son of God. You're a child of the king. You're coming out with a shout in your mouth. God is about to send an angel with an earthquake to deliver you. Drop off your great throat. I hear something in my spirit. At the count of three. Oh God, this is going to get crazy. At the count of three. One, two, three. Shout! You may be seated. I'm still waiting on the sound. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I have two of my books I want to introduce to persons who may not be um, aware of these books to see how they will be a blessing to you. I have one here that I believe that every Christian should have a copy of this one. Bible studies for a strong foundation. This book is written and arranged in three areas. The questions are asked, the scriptures are provided, you search the scriptures, find the answers for yourself, and write them in the space provided. So this is what I call a self Bible study course. I wrote this book about two years ago. The Lord, the Lord impressed on me that the foundation in the church is very shallow that people are having the icing but not eating the cake Amen. that uh, we have all the sweeties but not the substance so this book covers three areas one what is the fundamental things that every christian should know what makes a church a bible believing church then two what are the essentials that every christian should know and then thirdly what are the foundational doctrines that every christian should know when you're building a house what's the first thing you build and the foundation determines how high the house can go right the strength and the vulnerability of that house right now if you want to go high in god you have to make sure you have a good foundation if your foundation is shallow every wind that blow you will tumble then last of all this book was written published last year the mystery of heavenly places the 12 dimensions of heaven listen to me i tell the truth i lie not yes sound starts sounding better now i tell the truth i lie not i wrote this book just after i finished my 40 day fast when i say 40 day i mean 40 day on water only i had i must confess every now and then i look malta because i was still preaching 
and I was still traveling. I lost some serious weight. Over 40 plus pounds. Went from a size 16 and a half neck to a 14 and a half. From a size 36 waist to a size 32. But God was faithful in that time to give me a number of visitation. And I tell the truth. I have been to heaven three times as far as I know. And there are some things that the Lord has shown me that I have included in this book. The 12 dimensions of heaven. If you want to understand the mystery. For Paul said that we are seated where? In heavenly in Christ Jesus. Have you ever answered the question, what are heavenly places? If you want to know about the heavenly places, then get the book. I have brought a few copies with me. Hallelujah. Well, it's time for me to preach, to teach, and to publish the word. So today, I'm going to teach. I'm going to preach. I'm going to prophesy. I'm going to cast out devils. And I'm going to pray for the sick. Shall I do it? Somebody say mix up Bishop. Come and say mix it up. So mix up. Mix up. So I'm going to give you a piece of everything. Now stand to your feet one more time. Stretch your hand towards me. Pray for me. Say Lord. Lord anoint the Bishop. Use him today. To be a blessing to my life. Open his eyes. And show him my situation. Give him a word for me. Come on, say, Bishop. Whatever God tell you, or God show you, to give to me. Give it to me. Pull, no, pull, 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 no, pull. Oh, you're not pulling yet, man. Pull. Well, look at your neighbor. He says, neighbor. If you don't want yours, I will just take it too. So let the greedy people open up their mouth and give God a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right, be seated in heavenly places. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So follow me quickly in your Bibles. Uh, it's always easier for me when I have somebody who can read the scripture. Where is my reader? Is she, is, she, is, she, is she available? You're available? Read for me fast. And read like an evangelist. Let's go. Psalm 88 and verse 12. The message I have for you today. Are you ready for it? Delivered from the land of forgetfulness. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, delivered from the land of forgetfulness. This is my time to be remembered. The curse shall be broken. Are you ready for it? There's going to be a curse breaking anointing here. In the mighty name of Jesus. Read. Shall your wonders be known in the dark, and your righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? And thy righteousness where? In the land of forgetfulness. forgetfulness. Listen to me. Let me tell you. There are some infernal regions where a person's soul can be trapped. Listen to me. There are people who are delivered, but they are not set free. It is just like when Lazarus came from the grave. He was delivered from death, but he still was not yet set free. Because he was wrapped up with grave clothes. There are some people, they are delivered, but they are not set free. It means that they have been held captive somewhere. And there are regions in the realms of the spirit where a person's soul can be trapped. One of those regions is called the land of forgetfulness. That is why there are some people, it seems as if nobody remembers you. You will take care of people's children. They will migrate and they'll go abroad and they'll never remember you. You will work 
in a company for 30 years and the boss does not know your name you'll find yourself always other people being promoted over you find other people who are not even qualified as you <laughs> sometimes you wonder what is happening ha huh? seem as if every time you make an application for something you are met with failure yeah. that something wants to deny you and not to approve your approvals but i come with an anointing to break that curse look at your neighbor say neighbor yeah. i am coming out of that land <laughs> come and say i shall be remembered shall be come and say i shall be remembered, I shall be remembered. you see this land of forgetfulness to which many persons have found themselves trapped and sneered by the devil. Sometimes people can do certain things in the realms of the spirit to affect a person's life and to banish them to that place. Some people, all of a sudden, you have lost your favor. One time, everything was easy. Things were happening. But it seems as if something just changed your favor. Yeah. And then everything starts to go down. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, it must break today. Yeah. Come and say, it must break today. Yeah. Come and tell your neighbor, it must break today. Yeah. So I'm here to tell somebody that God is about to open for you your book of remembrance. Anybody want God to remember you in this season? Anybody want God to remember you in this season? Yeah. Enough is enough. Some people, you have found yourself in a place always bewildered. Seem as if you're always been going through rejection. People always like you just for a short time. Then they just turn against you. Seem as if nothing is working in your favor. But I say after this meeting, I say that thing shall turn around. Oh, I wish I was in the right place. I say after this, there's some people. You're inside here, and it seems as if you're going through near success syndrome. You're always disappointed at the edge of your breakthrough. As you reach right at the edge, something just happens to stop you. And you wonder what is it that is monitoring my progress what is it that always want to stop me and block me from achieving my end my goal and my result could it be that there is a power that is holding me in the land of forgetfulness well i come to tell you that this is the year that you shall be remembered this is the season that you shall be remembered this is the season that god shall open for you the book Somebody say, open my book, God. Come and say, open up my book. Listen to me and hear me very well. I'm reminded of a story in the book of Esther. Where Mordecai, a man who was living as a prince in the land of Israel. He was living as a noble. He was taken into captivity. They took off his royal garment and put on him a slavery garment you see because the way you dress is the way people address you how do you know a soldier by his uniform how do you know a nurse mm -hmm. how do you know somebody who is a building constructor uniform with his helmet and his boots and all of that uh, how do you know a prostitute just as how there is physical garment by which people address you there are spiritual garments by the way you are dressed so the bible says i see a strange thing i see princes living like servants walking like servants and servants riding horses like princes mordecai his kingly garment was stripped from him and he was placed as a servant in babylon so how was he seen as a servant some of you the enemy has taken away your garment of favor 
like Joseph and has given you the garment of a slave and has sold you to the Ishmaelite and you have found yourself in a place of forgetfulness where nobody remember you but I come to tell you today that your garment shall change your favor shall change your we know we know we know so here Mordecai did one of the most excellent thing a man could have done he saved the life of the king but the king forgot him nobody never remember him because the man seemed as if he was in a land of forgetfulness but one night the king couldn't sleep and the king twist and turn and as he twist and turn his bodyguard was standing right there watching over him he said to his bodyguard i can't sleep read me something from the book of the chronicles and they took the book according to esther chapter 6 and they opened the book you want to find read for me fast when they opened the book she began to read he began to read from the book the same place in the book where it was recorded that mordecai saved his life so he said to the king what honor and dignity has been done for Mordecai and the king said nothing has been done look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor something must be done come and tell me say, something must be done some of you for what you have done and all you have helped other people you should not be forgotten I say something must be done your story must change your story must turn around your breakthrough must come slap your neighbor say neighbor something must be done lord mr son man help me something must be done watch it now watch it now so the same night a man was on his way yeah. was on his way to tell the king to hang Mordecai and all the Jews and when he was on his way to deliver bad news he was just a little late so he didn't hear the first part of the story so the king said to his bodyguard who is in the court who outside there hmm. the bodyguard said it's hey man he said oh so he went out to meet hey man he said hey man tell me what honor and dignity must be done to the man in whom the king delight now Haman thought the king was speaking to him so Haman for a moment cleared his throat <coughs> you see <coughs> I believe you should put your royal robe on that man you should saddle the man on your white stallion Mm -hmm. you should put your crown upon his head mm -hmm. you should put your signet ring on his finger mm -hmm. you should allow your choicest servant in Israel to parade him through the streets of Babylon and let the people bow and say hail him in whom the king delight and then the king looked at him man and said well so go and do to Mordecai I said some people who have been trying to kill you I said God shall turn around and they shall promote you I said some people are trying to look at your neighbor say neighbor this is my season for promotion this is my season for promotion look at your neighbor say neighbor all those who hate you will have to celebrate you i say all those who are stopping you can't stop you look at your neighbor say neighbor my time to be remembered my time to be remembered oh my god almighty listen to me and hear me very well Woo. so they told him go and do it for Mordecai immediately when they took off the servant garment and put on royal garment the man position change the man start riding like a king again look at your neighbor say neighbor my status soon change my status soon change god soon turn around everything for my good okay so I want us to pray a prayer point 
Are you ready for the prayer point? Yes. We're going to ask God today to open the book of remembrance for us. There are some of us, the reason why it seems as if people forget you. Like your breakthrough can't come. It's because you don't understand certain principles. Listen to me. Trail and lower that tongues of fasting may not help you like one teaspoonful of obedience. If you could rabba shaka tala baba shata and get rich, you'd have rich long time. Hey, if you could have hey, a rock to rock and demon leave your demon leave your long time. Reason why some of us are not where we should is because you don't understand principles. You ready for it? So we're going to pray one serious prayer point. What is now? Malachi chapter 3. Every time we read Malachi, people think about tithe. But Malachi is more than tithing. Watch Malachi 3. Take it from verse 14. Here is why some people are stuck where they are. Touch your neighbor and say, Listen. Read. Malachi come before Matthew. Malachi chapter 3. When you find it, say, Bam. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Wow. If I have a look at more Jews that I preach, but if I preach, I've got to bust up my voice. Read. Take it from verse 14. Malachi 3, verse 14. You have said, it is useless to serve God. What profit it is that we have kept is ordinance. Aha. Uh -huh. Listen. Continue. Listen. There are some people... The reason why you are not yet remembered is because you talk too much. <laughs> and sometimes you'll be talking the wrong things. The Bible says, oh, full, full of right words. Hear what some people say when they are going through. Look like me, I serve God for nothing. He, look on me fast and not not change. Look how me afflict my soul in prayer. Nothing now change. Continue. Read. And that we have walked as mourners before the Lord of oaths. Uh -huh. So now we call the proud blessed. Yes. For those who do wickedness are raised up. Yeah, we say, God, look on them people who are wicked. And them I drive nice car. Live in a big house. I look at me, I serve you, and not now go after me. Lord say, you talk too much. Continue. They even tempt God and go free. Yeah, they even tempt God and go free. And me can get away with one little sin. If I ever do anything, God beat me. But, 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 but watch, watch some people. Some wicked people I get delivered from the court case. God! But hear what God says now. Read. Then those who fear the Lord spoke to one another. Uh -huh. And the Lord listened and heard them. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, God is ear dropping on your conversation. Am I talking to somebody here? If you talk too stubbornly against God, he might shut up the book for you. But if you are faithful in your conversation, the book will open. Hear what God says now. Read. So a book of remembrance was written before him. For those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. Lift up your right hand and say, oh God, oh God, open my book of remembrance. Remember me, God. Come and say, remember me, God. I come to tell at least about 100 of you inside here tonight, today uh, that God is about to open for you a book of remembrance uh, that your days of struggle is coming to an end uh, that your days of uh, even disappointment is coming to an end uh, I said we are the people inside here that want God to remember you uh, well open up your mouth and say remember me God come on somebody say remember me God remember me so I come here now to raise up some people inside here because God spoke into my spirit as I was coming and said son when you come raise up some Noah's hey. some curse breakers hey. and so Genesis 8 and verse 1 says and the Lord remembered Noah look at your neighbor say neighbor 
the Lord is about to remember me this month. Am I talking to somebody inside here? Lift up your right hand and say, Remember me, God. And when God opened the book of remembrance, and now you alone him go remember, the Bible says that God remembered Noah and every living thing. I said, God go remember you, and God go remember your family. God go remember your son, remember your daughter, remember your sister, your cousin, your auntie. Somebody say, God, remember me. Hey, listen to me. Listen to me very well. So God remembered Noah. What about Noah? Why God remembered Noah? He? What about Noah? I'm going to connect it. Ready for the connection? First of all, here it is. When Noah was born. No, we are full of revelation now. When Noah was born, a prophecy went over his life. Hear the prophecy. Genesis 5 verse 28. Hear the prophecy. Some of you, the day you were born, a prophecy went over your life. Hear it. Read. Boom. Lamech lived 182 years and had a son. Yes. And he called his name Noah, saying, This one will comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands and because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. And so they said, This one Noah shall comfort us because of the struggle and the hardship what we are going through. Because God cursed the ground and God said, by the sweat of your brow, you shall eat bread. So Lamech and Methuselah, they labor, they struggle, they work hard. But when Noah was born, Lamech said, this one shall comfort us. Because this one shall be the curse breaker in the family. This one will be the millionaire in the family. This one will end the hardship in the family. This one will end the labor in the family. This one will cause the family to move from labor to favor. This one will make the family be remembered. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. I am a curse breaker in the family. I wonder if I'm talking to any Noah's inside here. Anybody who's about to break the labor in your family and move your family from labor to favor. Hey, watch this. So God remember Noah. You ready for this? You ready for this? Bug your connection. Watch this now. So, look what happened now in Genesis 8. The Lord remembered Noah in that day. Genesis 8 verse 4. Boom! Boom! Then Three. the ark was rested in the seventh month, the seventeenth day of the month, and the mountains of Ara Ararat. Ararat. So the ark rested on the seventh month. On the seventeenth day of the seventh month. On Mount Ararat. Somebody say, help us, Bishop. Now let me make the connection. Watch this now. In 1 Peter 3 and from verse 19, it tells us that Jesus, that he suffered for us, that he may bring us to God. And in the flesh and by his spirit, he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Then he went on to say, Noah and the ark and the eight that were saved and baptism, which are the like figure. Then he went on to say, to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What connection does the death and the resurrection of Jesus has to do with Noah and the ark? Ask me, what? what? Ask me now. Shall I tell you? Yes. Shall I tell you? Yes. Well, let me tell you. Watch this now. What day it is today? 17. 17th of October. Yes. 17th of when? April. April. All right, the Bible was written in Jamaica. No. The Bible was written to Jamaicans. No. You know why it's not for us to understand the Bible? Because you're reading the Bible from a Jamaican eye. And the Bible was not written in Jamaica and written for Jamaicans. The Bible was written in a time and a context. If you understand the root of the Bible, you'll understand the revelations from the Bible. So can I help you now? Yeah. Noah, the curse breaker, hear me. So in the Jewish calendar, the seventh month was called the month of Abib. The month of what? Abib. 
But when the people of Israel came into Egypt, so from Adam to Noah, the seventh month is called Abib. But when the people of Israel multiplied and were in Egypt, and when God was about to deliver them from Egypt, he said to them in Exodus 12 and verse 1, in the same month called Abib, he said that this month shall be the beginning of months for you. So the Jews began celebrating that month as the first month. Then by the time it reached Esther, they changed the name Abib now to Nisan. So the month that we're in now, according to the Bible, is the month of Nisan, the first month. Now watch it. Jesus now was crucified the same day that the Jews were celebrating Passover. What is Passover? Passover was the remembrance and the memorial that the Jews would celebrate when they remembered that God told Moses, take a lamb, kill a lamb, use the blood, wipe your window lintel and your doorpost, make a cross on your door. And when I see the blood, I'll pass over. So every year they celebrate Passover on the 15th day of Nisan. And the what? Which would have been equivalent to the 15th day of the seventh month, which was changed to the first month. Hear me now. So, Paul said, even Jesus, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. The same day that Christ was crucified on the 15th was the same day that they were celebrating the Passover. And the blood of Jesus was typified to represent the blood that Moses placed on the doorposts. That's why when John saw him, John said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So he was the Lamb that Moses killed and put the blood on the doorposts. And so he came and fulfilled that typology. On that day, what is now? He slept in the grave on the 15th on the 16th and rose again on the 17th so the same day that Jesus rose from the dead was the same day that Noah's ark rested on Mount Ararat am I talking to somebody here look at your neighbor say neighbor stop stress just rest because Jesus symbolized the ark. You only can find rest in him. Jesus symbolized Noah. He is your curse breaker. That is why when he prayed in the garden of Gethsemane, he prayed until his sweat became drops of blood. Because he brought the curse of hardship. He said, no, you don't need to live anymore. I can move you from labor to fever. I will break struggle from your life. Because the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add it no sorrow I said some of you need to hear this preacher man God can turn your situation around he can move you from zero and make you an hero I say I need to talk to the right church I wish I wish I could get five people right now who could open your mouth I said remember me God so in the power of the revelation now so the boat went and rest on Mount Ararat you know what Ararat mean the word Ararat mean the curse is broken so when Jesus rose from the dead he's making a statement to each and every one of you that the curse is broken look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor the curse is broken come and tell three persons the curse is broken Boy, that is why sometimes you go through some storms in life and the storms beat your ship 
and box you all about the place. But sometimes those storms is just positioning you to rest in your Ararat. Am I talking to somebody who might be going through a storm? I said I hear a song where it says, no matter what storm cloud may rock the ship of mine. I hear a song where it says, will your anchor hold in the storms of life? I come to call somebody back today. I know you're going through your storm. God has an Ararat for you. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. Just rest. Don't stress. I know you are going through, but don't stress. Because the curse is broken. I'm here to talk to some people in here who are tired of going through the same thing over and over again. I'm here to talk to some people who will say, God, give me comfort. My family must turn around. I must be the curse breaker in my family. Something must happen to deliver my family from hard labor. Oh, God. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. I don't know about you, but I am believing God that this year the curse shall be broken from my life totally. Somebody say, God, say it one more time, say, God, remember me. Come and say, remember me. Holy Ghost, help me. Hey, hear me. Hear me very well. You mean Bishop? That there is a way that God can open my book of remembrance. There is a way for you to force the hand of God. Which means that God can't help but remembering you. Hey, look what Noah did after he came out of the ark. After he came out of the ark, right on the 17th, the Bible says the water began to abate and he began to see the top of the mountains. I said, some of you, after today, the 17th day, you are about to begin to see the top of your mountains again. Something is about to come for you. All the flood waters that have been trying to overwhelm you, I said, God, bring it down those waters. You are about to see your breakthrough this year. You are about to see your breakthrough this month. Hey. Guess what? Today is a prophetic day. It's not an ordinary day. We are right in the season called Passover. The same time when Jesus was raised from the dead. The same time when the curse was broken. Because the Bible says, curse is everyone that hangeth upon a tree. But Jesus became a curse for us. That you might receive the blessings of Abraham. He have already broken the curse. I say, sickness have no power in your body. I say, demons have no power to control you. I say, today, demons will flee. I say, today, sickness will go. I say, today, Yoke shall be broken. If I be a man of God, and I know that I am, I say today, many of you shall be set free. Because there is an angel that God sends out in Passover time. And God promised us in Passover, I shall be an enemy to your enemy. I shall bless your bread and your water. And I shall take sickness from your midst. In the time of the Passover, God promised that your enemies shall turn their backs. But the problem with the church is this. My people perish because Obi are strong. My people perish because Satan are wicked. Why do people perish? Why Christian perish? Let me ask you one more time. Why Christian perish? Lack of what? So in your getting, what must you get? But guess what? Most Christians too lazy. So they come for others to pray for them. And they don't read Bible for themselves. So a preacher can come and preach anything to them as long as him sound powerful. Hallelujah! What you need is knowledge. Because through knowledge, my people are delivered. 
Woi. Somebody say woi. Hey, hear me now. So watch this now. What can I do to provoke the hand of God that he remembers me? Look what Noah did. When Noah came out of the ark, Noah sacrificed one of every living thing. One clean animal of every living thing. The man sacrificed one cow, one bull, one ephah, one goat, one ram, one turtle dove, one pigeon. No, that's a lot of sacrifice to sacrifice. You know? And when Noah started burning them and the thing went up to God's nostril, God made a covenant with Noah. So as long as the earth remains, there shall be seed time and harvest. Because this man raised an altar to provoke me. Listen, every one of us, your life is affected by an altar. Amen. Somebody say help. Amen. Somebody say help. Amen. Some of you inside here, there are altars speaking against you. So God sent a servant in 1 Kings chapter 13 and said go to Bethel and curse the altar when the servant reached Bethel the servant said O altar O altar hear the word of the Lord thus said the Lord the man that stand behind you burning incense upon you shall their bones be burnt and Jeroboam was right there at the altar and stretched and against the prophet and said arrest him and Jeroboam and dried up and he said man of God pray for me because God joy up him man the man went all the way from the northern kingdom, Judah, and went to the southern kingdom of Israel, known at Bethel. His assignment after traveling over 100 miles was to go and prophesy to an altar. He wasn't here prophesying to the king or to the people. God sent him to prophesy to an altar. Why would God send a man over 100 miles to prophesy to an a non-living entity? Because altars are dangerous. Hey, hey, look what Balaam, Balaam told Balaam to do. He said, raise seven altars against the people of Israel. Not even one altar, seven. Some of you, your life is altered because of somebody who have raised an altar against you. But I say, any altar against you shall come down today. Somebody say, God, remember me. Listen, if you want God to remember you, you must learn how to raise that altar. How to what? Raise that altar. How to what? Raise that altar. Somebody say altar for altar. altar. That's what does that mean now? I remember the first time I went to Africa. And when I went to Africa the first time there, I ministering. And for the first time, God opened my eyes and I was seen in the room of the spirit. I was in northern Nigeria in a place called Kanu. And while I was there ministering, oh my God, I saw this telephone number flashing before my eyes. So I said, whose number is 0800 Africa number line? One man said, that's my number, out of a crowd of about 2,000. Then as the man was coming, I saw two names flashing before me. One was an English name and one was an African name. I had faith for the English name. So I said, who is Eric? He said, I am Eric. He said, well, they must write then. So I said, who is Abba Kunzi? He said, I am Abba Kunzi. <laughs> so I said, God, give me telephone number, first name, last name. Then the frequency moved from video to audio. So as I pray for him, I start to hear God in my ears. God said, tell him that they have been calling his number. And they have said that they have sacrificed two cows. One for him and one for his son. And he and his son will die. As I was saying to the man, he said, yes, prophet. Up to today, they called me today and told me they have sacrificed two cows. One for me and one for my son. And me and my son, we must die. I said, this is what they do. This is what they did. They perform rituals on the cows and sell the parts in the market to be purchased. And as people are eating the parts from the cow, you feel like things are eating out your body. The man began to cry and said, yes. I am not coming from the doctor. I am fearful. I have prostate cancer. I lay hands on him. He fell over. I use my hand like a knife because God teach your hands to war fingers to fight. I cut him open. Take out some things. Throw it away and sew him up back. Not my fault. Just my anointing. 
The man got up, and you know African when they get a miracle. And he began to run around. I'm delivered! I'm delivered! The church was crazy. The following day, I'm in my hotel. I heard a commotion. When I look through the door, I saw the man and the security guard saying, you can't go and disturb the guests. I must first call the room. He said, I must see the prophet that prayed for me last night. I must see the prophet. I must see the prophet. So I saw him. I said to the security, please let him come. The man came. He had a bag. When the man came with his bag, he came into the room. He said, man of God, my enemies have sacrificed two cows. One for me and one for my son. I can't give cow to God, but I bring to you the value of two cows. Put this on your altar and pray for me. 300,000 Naira. All I could say was, Hallelujah! Because I have never seen it like that before. What I know is that church people, when they come to altar, hey, hey. What's your number? Put Jenny as a altar for your altar. One month come all the way from month go be if I pray for him and work some deliverance. After a prophesy and most of the man tallin' up bass. Man has six feet five inches and thick. When I saw him, I had to call for two more assistants to help me. Just in case demons start manifest and start apachaka. Hey! God opened my eyes. I said to him, you, your wife, you and your wife went to a place in St. Thomas. You paid $50,000 to a certain older man to help you. The wife, I pop open. For your mouth start trembling because she frightened. Never know said prophet could have seen so clear. The old man said, true. I said to him, have you been helped? No. I said, but worse, you went to our next place right here and sent me before you came to me. 80,000. By this time, both of them start crying. And not my fault. Not just me and 19. I said to him, every time you get to work, you lose the work. You can't keep no work. Your wife can't. Mm -hmm, I, I can't talk the party. He said, yes. I prayed for him three hours. Me, I prayed till the man get deliverance. I said to him, when you go back, you're going to get a good job. You're going to be a supervisor. You're going to get a lot of money. But at that time, I was still a little afraid to demand certain things. So I told him, remember the Lord. But what I wanted to tell him you know, is remember the prophet. <laughs> but at that time, I was too shy and too proud. So I said, remember the Lord. Let me heart me, I said, remember me too. You know. Remember the Lord. The man, when he was leaving the altar after three hours of prayer, he dropped 500 Jamaican dollars. Oh, and go over and go pay 80,000 and 50,000. I saw people treat God and I saw them treat God altar. That is why God can't remember them. Lord church quiet. Lord church quiet. He? People have more respect for Satan altar than them have for God altar. That is why before fire came from the altar, Elijah had to appear the altar of the Lord and put a bullock on the altar. If there is no sacrifice on the altar, even carry it to a naked altar. Hey, God, remember me. God, remember my family. Hey, when did God remember Anna? After Elkanah went to the altar and made a sacrifice and said, God, enough is enough. And she went right in the time of Passover and started to whisper. And God allowed Eli to hear and see her lips. I said, no man, this is your year for your breakthrough. Listen to me and hear me very well. Every altar raised against your life, it must come down. Somebody say, come down. Come on, somebody say, come down. I don't know why I feel the way how I'm feeling. But I hear Holy Ghost talking to me and say, help them some more. Because I need to help you with my testimony. Can I help you with my testimony? Yeah. Because in a minute from now, we're going to raise an altar. Can I help you with my testimony? Yeah. 
Let me help you quickly with my testimony. Here, hear me real fast. Woo! I remember one night, I was in my bed sleeping. And my wife said, I just got up in the middle of the night and said, return, return, return. The following morning, she gave me a nickname for the whole week. Return, return. Say, you chat me asleep last night. Return, return. Anyway, I didn't take it for anything. A few days later, a woman came to me, an elder in the church. <laughs> hey. The elder said, man of God, she had never, at that time I was not a pastor, I was a fellow elder. She had never, ever in her life, hey, ever saluted me with such salutation, man of God. She didn't even call me brother. She just said, Richardo. But this time he said, man of God. So I said, how can I help you? He said, I've been having this reoccurring dream. I said, what? He said, every night me go to bed, me say the same dream. What? I see two coffin come into my house. One with my name on it. And one with my daughter's name on it. I said, wow. Then she started crying. He said, Pastor, but I think I know why I'm having this dream. I have something to confess. I said, go ahead. He said, well, the Lord was opening your eyes too much. And you were seeing too much in the church. Those days, I was a raw prophet. Anything God showed me, me just talk it out. But it was not wisdom. So when it was my time to preach, people not come to church. <laughs> God them say that the prophet they are too much. Lord Jesus of Nazareth. The woman said, so I went somewhere for them to close your eyes. But when I went to the place, the old man said, if I send a blow against that young man, he going come back to me. So I concluded in my talk from experience, he must have tried it in the past and some box him cross him for your side. So the man said to her, But I know somebody you can't go to in Saint Elizabeth. The man there, he may have great power, he can help you. Woman, pick up herself, go all the way to Saint Elizabeth. Fix up some things. And then me remember when my wife tell me. And then she said, you can't pray for me. With all sincerity and brokenness of heart, I said to her, me sorry, me send it back, and me can't take it back. The sad, the sad thing about the story is this. The woman daughter died. Today, I see the woman, her belly is like this. Her eye is sunk in a socket and black under. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, they shouldn't have. Come and tell your neighbor, say, they shouldn't have. Tell four people they shouldn't have. I say, whatever they have done, I say, they shouldn't have. I say, after this meeting, I say, trouble. I say, fire. I just got about two more scriptures and me finish. Read that one that's we know. Obidaya. Obi can't find Obidaya. Obidaya. I said, somebody, this is your season for your deliverance. The Lord shall remember you. The altar speaking against you shall come down. Who oh, will kill you? Who oh, will block you? Who oh, will stop you? Who oh, will hinder you? I said, God, go and turn them over. You're coming out of the land of forgetfulness. It is your season to be remembered. This is your time for your rest. He's about to hit all of your stress. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You find over there? Yeah, yeah. Read from verse 12. Bam. 
Bam. Oh, I feel what it was. But you should not have gazed on the day of your brother. Shouldn't have. Continue. In the day of his captivity. Uh -huh. Nor should you have rejoiced over the children of Judah. You shouldn't have. In the day of their destruction. Uh -huh. Nor should you have spoken proudly in the day of distress. You shouldn't have. You should have not entered the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Uh -huh. Indeed, you should not have gazed on their affliction uh -huh. in the day of their calamity. Nor laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Shouldn't have. You should not have stood at the crossroad. I said, shouldn't have. To cut off their abundance. Them shouldn't and try and block you. Them shouldn't try and rob you. Them shouldn't try and stop you. Why? 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 Where not? Here, here, here. Read. You should. You should not have stood at the crossroad to cut off there among them who escaped. Uh -huh. Nor should you have delivered up those among them who remained in the day of distress. Watch it now. Why? Read. For the day of the Lord upon all the nation is near. Uh -huh. As you have done, it shall be done to you. I say, as they have done, it shall be done to them. I say, those who dig a pit, go and drop into it. Those who... Put your neighbor and say they should it up. We are not as they have done, it shall be done to them. Read. Your reprisal shall return upon your own head. Your own reward shall return upon their own head. Somebody say return. Say backfire. Back to sender. Why? Because the next verse says, because you shall possess your possession. I says your time to possess your land. Your time to possess your motor vehicle. Your time to possess your house. Your time to possess your wealth. Your time. Hey, look at your neighbor, say neighbor. They shouldn't have. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. I go raise an altar. My altar must speak louder than my enemy's altar. So we are telling So I did a survey now on those that God remembered. And everybody where God remembered have a common factor. What's the factor? I will tell you. I remember first, David. Hey. When plague and pestilence was hitting Israel, he went to get a field to make a sacrifice. And the man said, you are king, take the field. He said, what can I give to God if it don't cost me something? And because of the sacrifice the man made, God stayed the plague and then God visited him and made a covenant of salt with him and said David as long as you live your dynasty shall be preserved <laughs> hallelujah there shall not be one that fail that shall sit upon your throne <laughs> till when all Solomon was misbehaving yes, sir. that the prophet said because of David's sake oh, okay. you shall keep two kingdom listen to me and hear me very well God remembered David because of his sacrifice. Because of his what? Sacrifice. I remember Solomon too. He went up on Mount Gibeon. And the man sacrificed 1,000 bull. 1,000 what? Bull. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. How much for a bull? A bull called a Jamaica. Tell me. About much? About 500,000? The man said about 500,000 for a bull. A bull. Now multiply 500,000 times 1,000. How much that? How much that? At a 500 million. Listen to me. In one offering, Solomon gave 500 million dollars. The man sacrificed a thousand thousand is a million, you know. 
So 500,000 times a thousand is 500 million. The man gave one big sacrifice right there. So God come down, God said, yeah. you, you can't outgive me. Where you are? Man said, well, have a fact, money is not the problem. Become a father rich. So give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So God said, all right, on top of that, I'm going to give you a great wealth. The following day, the man became the wisest, world, the wisest man in the world. And then a couple of months later, became the richest man in the world that there's none other to rival him. Hey, remember Mary? Mary came. She was the one that Donna Summer wrote a song about. She worked hard for her money. So hard for her money. She was a prostitute. She knew in her job that there was no pension. So she had to save up some money over the years. Until she saved up one year's wage. And she bought an alabaster. This was her pension money. And she put it up. And said, just in case the body get tired. I have something I can live off for one year. But when she met Jesus, he cast out seven demons out of her. And she heard that he was in Simon's eternal house. Same as if she knew that house in Owen. And she found the house. And when she found the house, no man dared to speak against her. And when she began to bend, and I, I tell you, it may have looked like a vulgar look. Because she had to bow down, you know. And all her tears on his feet. And she break the alabaster. And she, and I, and she start to kiss him feet. And Simon said, if this man knew who was touching him. Jesus said, leave her alone. Then Judah said, we could have sold this expensive ointment. What a waste of money. Waste of money. And put it in the treasury and help the poor. Jesus said, the poor you always have it. You leave this woman alone because she do a good work for me. She's anointing me for my burial, my death, and my resurrection. Hallelujah! Listen to me. She didn't realize that her brother Lazarus would have died a few days later. And that because of what she did, that Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead. I hear Jesus said to Judas, this that she has done shall be a memorial unto her. And everywhere the gospel is preached, her name shall be mentioned. That's why I call her name right now. What am I saying? What am I saying here? Hear me, people of God. I'm going to help you real good. Somebody say, help us, Bishop. I soon finish. But here, watch. Oh, God, I feel holy ghost. The woman, she broke her alabaster. Her most expensive, one-year wage. It was equivalent to 30 pieces of silver. And how much did Judas sell out Jesus for? Because his eyes was on the alabaster. Hey, hear me. You remember when Darkas died? They sent for Peter. Other people died in the church and they never sent for Peter. Why? Because there are some people, when they die, nobody remember them. Why? Because they have never done anything significant. But when Bob Marley died, they put up Marley before. When Abraham Lincoln died, they put up Lincoln Memorial. There are some people, they come to church and leave church and nobody miss them. But when Darkas died, they said, Darkas can't dead, man. This woman is a support, a pillar, and a rock to the church. So they sent for Peter. And Peter raised her from the dead. Oh my God. So I discovered that God sent an angel to Cornelius, Acts 10. And when the angel came to Cornelius, the angel said, Cornelius, your prayer and your arms have come up as a memorial. He said, all your prayer and your sacrificial giving, it attacked to God. Yes. Trail a load of tongues and shabba ba 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 and fasting. That alone now will broke you out. When you want to get break out, understand the principles 
here is what I want to tell you. This is your hour to set up a bull, a cow, a goat, a turtle dove, something on the altar. Let me ask you a good question. How much fat in a milk? Tell me now. About 230 of fat in a milk, don't. I saw me here, you know. When me go and shop, me just buy. So me asked my members yesterday how much fat in a milk. And somebody tell me it's about $235. Yeah. It raised? Yeah. Yeah. How much feet? Yeah. Eh? Call it $300 for your tin of milk? Yes. For your tin of milk? Yes. <laughs> so some of you come to church and not even a tin of milk, you give God? <laughs> church quiet. Yeah. How much you chicken back? $95? Well, I, I, I will tell you where people can come at church. Plenty chicken back. Because most time when people are give, all them give is a hundred dollars. Any other question? Who will ever go to an Obia man and give Obia man hundred dollars? Obia man say, disrespect. So why is there so much dishonor in the house of God? No, me not say nothing wrong with the hundred dollar, you know. What me I talk about is your mentality. Because some people says, if I give 10,000, me I waste my money. What a waste. Sometimes you're giving, don't even immediately satisfy your need. Because of what she did, her brother was raised from the dead. Some they give a seed, and God use that seed to deliver your son from a car accident. Let me ask, have you ever given God a cow? I know you can't give him a physical cow. So if I ask you, you come to church to carry a cow. Can you imagine you come to church? And you carry your goat. Everybody with your offering, you goat. Meh! Man, God said, those days over. He said, sell the goat and carry the goat money come. And bestow it for whatever your soul lost it after. Now, let me ask you again. Who inside here have ever given God a cow? How much for a cow? How much for a cow? Give me the basic price. Thousand. A bully at a bow, man. I'm not bullying me at all. I'm about regular cow. Regular cow, 300. Regular cow. The man said, how much? Uh, 200,000. Let me ask. How much on inside here? Ever give God a sacrifice of 200,000? Listen. The bigger your sacrifice is the bigger your altar. The bigger your altar is the greater the power to open the heavens and silence your enemies. Let me ask you, who inside here ever give God a goat? How much for a goat? It's about 15,000 for a regular small goat. 16,000. How much you ever give God a goat? All right, one and two person may have given a goat. I mean, in a top about ram goat. Because ram goat about 50,000. And they have some special goat about 70, 80,000. Fear chicken. A pound. Well, yes, yeah, yeah, two hundred. So a regular chicken is about a what? Thousand dollar. So guess what now? Like Noah, I am going to raise an altar today, and I'm going to call for the animals. Church not working, you know. Everybody was your shout, and nobody now shout again. In a minute from now, the animals, because all fingers not equal, you know, says that everybody has the equal ability to give like others. So God will meet you where you are. But, but I will challenge you to, to understand this. When you trust God, God will set you up. 
Lift up your right hand. Say, God, I am setting up my memorial. I am setting up my memorial. Let me end by saying this. My daughter used to work insurance. Sagi Core. My wife told me to buy a policy from her. So I bought a nice expensive policy. Not just to support her. Well, part of my heart was saying to support her. But my wife told me that you're on the front line. Anything can happen. And if you should die, a good, a godly man must leave an inheritance for his children. That's a good point. But me believe she's not going to live till the rapture comes. She said, nonetheless, I don't want to be like the woman that goes to the prophet and says, my husband is dead and the creditors have come for my children. I have children attending college. How can I something? Treat them one time. Whoa! Listen to me. So I bought this policy. And every month I pay a premium. Watch this. Just in case anything happen. And I don't foresee anything happening. But just in case. Guess what? A lump sum is there to remember me that will go to my family. All truths are parallel. If I can do it in the natural, then I can also do it in the supernatural. Which means I can set up a covenant with God and say, God, this is my covenant. Watch over me and my family. Listen to me. God is a businessman. God will not invest in anything that he will not benefit from. So God so loved the world that he... So God gave one so he could get many. Listen, if you have a business and you're not tied, it means God is not a sheer owner in your business. Now, if somebody comes to rob your business, God can't help you. Because when God looked, God said, Well, I'm not a shareholder. So the man can vandalize the business. But if God is a shareholder, then God will come in and rebuke the devourer for your sake. Hey, one man in, 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 um, in Nigeria, a very wealthy man, at this big house. True story, you know. And the man dedicated one room to God. He said, This is God's room. Occasionally, he'll go in the room to sweep it and dust it. Everything set up. One day, thief came and cleaned out the man's house. Except the one room. The man was angry with God. And he said, God, what? You allowed them to take everything from my house. And not trouble your room. God said, Son, all you gave me was one room. If you had given me the house, <laughs> lift up your right and say, God, remember me. Come and say, Remember me. Let me tell you what I'm going to do now. I'm going to curse some evil altars fight in your life in a minute from now every witchcraft altar raised against you is going to come down but before i do the curse of the altar i want to raise the altar of jehovah because today is altar versus altar am i talking to somebody here am i talking to somebody here we are right in a prophetic season stand to your feet stand to your feet Say, I feel Holy Ghost. I feel Holy Ghost. Everybody, lift your hands right where you are. Spirit of the living God. For a matter of fact, I feel something is about to break in the realms of the Spirit. Lift up your hands right where you are. Spirit 
spirit of the living God. Move in this place right now. Move in this place right now. I hear the spirit of the Lord speaking in my spirit. I say at the count of seven, there is about 17 of you that the Holy Ghost is about to touch you right where you are standing. At the count of seven, there is about 17 of you and the Holy Ghost is about to touch. I need some ushers. I need some ushers. I need some helpers. As they begin to manifest, bring them to the front. As they begin to manifest, bring them to the front. Ushers, look around. I'm going to count to seven. There's about 17 people. And the Holy Ghost is about to touch them. The altars in their lives are about to break. The evil curse in their life is about to break. One. Makashapata la baba bando de bose, di baba baba bando de bose, kala baba bando de yandai. Rapa sa kuriya mama mama koshe de bai. Rapa sa kata ya da 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 shanda. Tu meko lo bose pe ya ba rapa baba bando de bai. Masakata ya da da ba. It's about to happen. It's about to happen. It's about to happen. Four. Rapa shata. Watch the middle now. Watch the middle. Watch the middle. Shapa kata shata ya da da ba. Rapa shanda da ba kando da ba haya. Five. Epo saka la manda ba haya. Rapa shaka nda da da ba 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 banda. Touch the ghost. Touch. Six. Make a banduri ba banduri ba 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 mande. Rapa shaka nda da ba. Move all the ghosts. Rapa shaka tanda. Touch all the ghosts. Touch all the ghosts. Seven. Take it now. Take it. Take it. Right where you are standing. Take it. Angel. Bring number one. Bring number one. Bring number one. Number one. Bring number one. I say have your manifest. Bring them to the front. I say have their manifest. Bring them to the front. We need some more male helpers. Help the ladies. Help Aluma Sakatai. Makata. I say, as they manifest, bring them to the front. Makata Sakata Bakuria Mama Mande. Five. Holy Ghost. Bring number four. Bring number four. Bring number four. Bring number four. Bring them. Bring them. Bring them. Bring number five. Holy Ghost. Bring me number five. Bring me number six. Bring me number six. Holy Ghost. Bring me number six. Bring me now. Bring me now number seven. Bring number seven. Bring number seven. Number seven. Number seven. Number seven. Number seven. Makata. Rabata shakata. Rababa. Holy Ghost. Bring me number eight. Bring me number eight. Bring me number eight. Bring me number eight. We go to the front as they manifest. Bring them, bring them. Bring them. Holy Ghost. Bring me number nine. Bring me number nine. Bring me number nine. Bring me number nine. Number nine is number nine. Number nine is number nine. Bring me number nine. The mama 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 mando do boche. Rabada. Shakada. Shabada. Rabada. Rabada. Bring me number ten, number ten, number ten, number ten. Bring me number ten. I said, bring me number ten. Holy Ghost, bring me number ten. Bring me number ten. Bring me number ten. I say, I release fire, fire. Bring me number eleven, number eleven, number eleven, number eleven, number eleven. 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 Bring me number eleven. I said, bring them. Bring them. Bring me number twelve. Bring me number twelve. Bring me number twelve. Bring me number twelve. Yes, sir. Bring me number twelve. Bring them now. Bring them from the back. 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 Holy Ghost, I send you to the back. I send you to the back. Number thirteen. Number thirteen. Number thirteen. Number thirteen. Number thirteen. Number thirteen. Bring me number thirteen. Bring me number fourteen. Angel of the Lord. Bring me number fourteen. Number fifteen. Number fifteen. Number fifteen. 
15, number 15, number 15, number 15. Put her down, put her on the ground. Baby number 16. Number 17. Touch your the ghost. Touch. Yes, put them down, put them down, put them down. Be delivered. Be set free. Be delivered. Be set free. Take it down, take it down. Every altar. You're not praying, you're not praying. Come on, say every altar. I say you're still not praying. Let your amen and let your prayer be louder than that. Say every altar. Fight in my life. Die. 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 Clap your hands and pray. Come on, clap your hands and pray. Clap your hands, clap your feet and pray. Come on, say you alter. Die in my life. Witchcraft. Die. Poverty. Die. Sickness. Die. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Because I look and I saw in the realm of the spirit something that has come to cage your blessing when I, I saw a sword that was used to divide you in two to affect the left side of your body and when I look I saw that something was used like binding wire and it was used to tie your pelvic region to affect you in your era of reproductivity I hear God says today I deliver you from the evil curse that was used to tie your womb and to tie your belly and to tie your spirit and to affect your heart and to affect your kidney and to affect your back when I say be delivered you shall be delivered Yes, you, 
I look and I see you in a dream and you're searching for your passport and you can't find it because a power came against you to take away your ability to travel to try to close up the doors of frequent travel for you because i see that the past eight years in your life the enemy has shut down your door of productivity but the year god said i brought you to this place today to break the curse that there shall be no more toil or struggle because i look and i saw eight years ago that there was a relationship that the enemy came to affect and he released a dangerous was the demonic assignment uh, to begin to cause people that you were loving and committed to to begin to turn against you and to begin to affect you and I saw you went through a period of depression uh, to the point that you almost gave up on life uh, but God brought you here today uh, to break you free uh, from the evil assignment uh, and he's about to judge the witches uh, that have done this to you uh, because I look and I saw also uh, you began to have some frequent uh, activity in your lower abdominal area uh, and I your God says, I'm setting you free now from the witchcraft. Break! One, two, three, jump! Yes, 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 yes! Yes, yes, yes! Yes, yes! Yes, yes! Receive it! Receive it in the Holy Ghost! Receive it in the Holy Ghost! Receive it in the Holy Ghost! Receive! Oh God, what a place! What an atmosphere, I'm telling you. I feel the power. Glory. I hear the Holy Ghost say one more time. Sit down. At the count of four. I want everybody jump up and call the name of Jesus like you're going to jump through the roof and you want Mandela Park area and Garden House area. One, two, three, four, jump! Give him! Insha! 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 Do it, Jew! Do it, Jew! Do it, Jew! Mighty God! At the count of seven, I want everybody to jump and turn three times and declare, I am delivered in Jesus' name. Listen, all your house are feel the one here. All your workplace where you go back tomorrow are feel the one here. All your husband where you give a problem are feel the one here. All your pity them where you give a problem and the baby father when I'm any pity them are going feel the one here. Every Jezebel are dead for the one here, and every demons are good on a hell go tell Satan said them foot block, them have diarrhea, vomit in Caesarea, all kind of sitting in a den liver. Are you ready? To jump and turn around three times and declare I am delivered in Jesus' name. Are you ready? After this, go buy pork, chicken, fish, and everything, and yam your belly full and come back for deliverance. Are you ready? Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, jump! Hey, turn, turn! Oh, 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 glory, 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 yeah, 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 glory, glory, yeah, the power of God, the power of God, oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, it is your day, yes, 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 it is your day, yes, your time, your season, your heart, yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, yes Lord, yes, 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 yes Lord, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to your name, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, God. Oh, God. Never be the same again. Never be the same. In the name of Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Glory. Hallelujah. 
Glory, glory, glory. Oh, yes, Lord. Never be the same. Never be the same. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory in this house. Glory in this place. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Move in the season. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Glory, glory, glory. 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 Come on, people of God. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Glory. Uh -huh. Whoa. Whoa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Glory. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, now. Yes, now. Hallelujah! 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 Oh God! Hallelujah, Jesus! Hallelujah! Yes, God! Yes, yes! You are good! You are good! You are good! It's your power! It's your power in the place! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! Oh, 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 glory to your name. Yes, Lord, glory to your name. Oh, God, oh. Woo. My God, yeah. Jesus, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yes, now. Say, thou King of glory. Arise. Visit me. And turn around. My captivity in Jesus name I shall not regret I will become great in the name of Jesus what you just said I will have no more regrets how many of you have had serious regrets in your life regret doing things regret some opportunity regret some decisions you've ever made your days of regretting what you always do is over you're not saying nothing say it again i shall not regret i will become great in jesus name every inhabitation and the uh and the motivation fashion against me be battered scattered and swallowed up by the power of God say oh Lord station and establish me in your favor here we go God of restoration restore my glory in the name of Jesus somebody say Lord Restore my glory. Restore my glory. How many of you want to experience your glory days? Say, as darkness gives up before light. Oh Lord, let all my problems give up before me. Say, thou power of God. 
destroy every trouble in my life in the name of Jesus say oh God arise and attack every lack in my life in the name of Jesus thou power of liberty and destiny manifest in my life every chapter of sorrow and slavery in my life close forever oh Lord let divine wisdom fall upon me all who are supporting me so I break the backbone of any further spirit conspiring treachery against me in the name of Jesus oh Lord hammer my matter into the mind of those who will assist so that they do not suffer from demonic loss of memory give God the glory say you devil lift that bag lift that purse lift that wallet you devil take your legs away from the top of my finances away from my bank account away from my purse and wallet I shall receive $150,000 by Friday of this week in the name of Jesus I shall receive half a million dollars by Friday of this week in the name of Jesus every money that I've lost every money that is owed to me devil back up off of my breakthrough and let all my money find me every assignment with finances that is aligned to my life let me receive it this week in abundance in the name of Jesus how many of you believe that you're going to receive a big money before the week is up somebody show shout if you believe it shout to receive it the miracle of money is going to find somebody this week the miracle of money the miracle of finances the miracle of is going to find your purse find your wallet find your handbag this week say by friday i'll be laughing and praising god i'll have a lot of money praise the name of jesus say devil take your legs off my money Gotta believe it. Keep your phone on. Keep checking it. Keep hey, just get expectation going because this week you shall get lots of money. This week the money owed to you gonna be paid. This week the people who promise your money and never give you will have to send it. They'll have to receive it. The woman said on Sunday morning for what over a year over two years somebody owed her money she buy the curse breaking package and decree and declare and before the week is out the person called and said listen i got your money ready to give you listen it doesn't matter how long you behold all when them are cussing and said them now your god is just gonna turn it around and they can't do nothing but pay you back money is gonna flow into your pockets this week touch your neighbor so make sure your pocket have no hole the fire of the Holy Ghost purge my life from any evil mark
put upon me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every spell upon my life. Break. Somebody say break. In the name of Jesus. You say you rod of the wrath of the Lord. Come upon every enemies in my life in Jesus' name. Angel of God, invade them. Lead them into darkness. In the name of Jesus. Say, oh Lord, let their flesh and skin become old. Let their bones break. Let my enemy's bones break. Somebody say, Lord, break them. Break them. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Let them come pass with God in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, lift your hands and let your angels edge them about and block their path. Make their chain heavy. When they cry, oh Lord, shout out their cries. Oh Lord, make their path crooked. Make their way be strained with sharp stone. Oh Lord, let the power of their own wickedness fall upon them. Let the power of their own wickedness fall upon them. Oh Lord, turn them aside and pull them into pieces. Fill them with bitterness and let them be drunk with wormwood. Oh Lord, break their teeth with gravel. Cover them with ashes. Remove their soul far from peace and let them forget prosperity. Uh oh, so let my enemies forget prosperity. That means my enemies will never prosper as I prosper. Oh, you're not giving God some praise. Let me close and send you home. Somebody praise the Lord. Lift your hand now, say, I crush. Lift your feet, say, under my feet. All evil powers trying to imprison me. Say, I crush under my feet all evil powers trying to prison me. Drink to your victory. Hallelujah. Say, all curse and demons programmed against me I neutralize you by the blood of Jesus every warfare prepared against my peace I command panic upon my enemies in the name of Jesus so I will not be frustrated I will not be upset I will praise God while he fight my battle in Jesus name at the count of one I want you to shout it like you're feeling let not my enemies try and move me one shout yes come on get ready to give him a shout one two say it one two three say it four say oh lord God of Israel, let not my enemies triumph over me. Say, God of Elijah, let not my enemies triumph over me. God of David, let not my Goliath triumph over me God of the Israelites
Christ. Let not the feelings too 